Hello everyone, I'm Peter Mitri. I'm a software developer at RTE, the French TSO. Uh, so today I'm going to speak to you about two open source tools, two softwares that help us optimize and share the operational cost of the European grid. In the first part of the presentation, I will focus on optimization. So I will talk about what we call the regional operational security coordination and remedial action optimization. In this part, I will introduce the open source uh, software, which is called OpenRAO. In the second part, I will talk about cost sharing through flow decomposition. And in this part, I will talk about the open source uh, software, which is called flow decomposition. I will try to keep as much time as possible in the end for questions. Uh, so, yeah, I hope uh, you have some questions. <laughs> Great. So, let's talk about, first of all, why we need to optimize the grid. So I, I, I understood that many of you work in the energy sector, but some don't. So uh, we, talked about, we talked a lot about uh, congestion management in the previous presentation. So here I'm going to try to set the scene and explain what a congestion is. So as you may know, um, electrical equipments in the grid have physical limits. Outside of these limits, the equipment is not safe to operate. So for example, a power line which transports electricity from point A to point B has a thermal limit. If we exceed this limit, if we transport too much power uh, on this line, the line may heat up, it may deform, it may even catch fire, and of course it's pretty dangerous. So uh, to help set the scene, uh, imagine here that you have a small grid or a small part of the grid which is represented in three nodes. So the nodes would be uh, like sites where consumers and producers are connected to the network. And between these nodes you have power lines, which are in uh, black here. And let's Im imagine that you have most of power production on the left side and most of power consumption on the right side. So most of the power will flow from the left to the right. Let's say that we have a consumption increase on the node here to the right. then. Of course, the flow will increase from the left to the right, and depending on the network's topology, it may very well be asymmetrical. So we may have more increase of the flow on the bottom part here, and we may find that the flow, the new flow that is on the line here, exceeds its limit. So this is what we call a congestion. Of course, there's not just the question of consumption and production. There is also some accidents that can happen in the grid and that can lead to congestions. So here you have an example. If we lose the line that transports electricity from here to here, then most of the power will flow through this line and this can lead to a congestion on the, on the upper line. As a TSO, RTE has the responsibility to be robust to all uh, eventual incidents on the network, so we have to do something about these congestions. So what can we do? Fortunately, we, we have what we call remedial actions. So these are actions on the network that can serve one of two purposes. The first purpose would be to redirect the flows on the lines. So for those of you who work in the electricity uh, sector, you may know them as topological actions, HVDC actions, or phase shift transformers. I'll talk about them in an, in an example on the slide that follows this one. There's also another type of remedial actions which acts on the injections. We call that either redispatching or, or counter trading. These are actions that will change the power production plan of the producers. In general, the first part of remedial actions, which redirect the flows, are called non-costly because the only cost to operate them is the aging of the equipment. The TSO has uh, power over these um, remedial actions. And the second type of remedial actions is costly because when we ask consumers or producers to change their injections, we pay them for their service. So to help set the scene, this is an example of non-costly remedial actions. So here in the, in the example above, we have the base case where no remedial action is applied. So let's say that you have a congestion in the line here. One first type of remedial actions is the topological action. So let's say that you can split this node here into two nodes. 
This will make the power flow um, equal on both lines, this one and this one, and then it will relieve this line here, and then we would have relieved the overload or the congestion on the network. Another type of remedial action is the phase shift transformer. So let's say that we equip the line here with a phase shift transformer. This kind of equipment is able to shift the phase of the current on the line and so act on the active power flow and so it can relieve the congestion on the line. And the second type, in the second family of remedial actions, which are costly remedial actions, this is maybe actually easier to understand. What we can easily do is to call a producer which is on this node, a power plant, and ask them to dec decrease their production, and ask a power plant that is here to increase their production. So naturally this makes the pr power production closer to the consumption site, and it reduces the overall flows on the network and by consequence, it relieves the congestion on the line. The key difference here is that power plants one and two get paid for their balancing service. The fact is that Europe's uh, electricity grid is highly meshed, interconnected, and um, synchronous. So for example, if you have an incident in France, it is instantly measured in Romania. Thus, the security of the network is no longer a national one, it's a European one, it's a global one. So TSOs have to conduct coordinated computations to ensure that the European network is secure. This is why the ACER, the, the Agency for Cooperation of Energy Regulators, imposes on TSOs to conduct what we call the Regional Operational Security Coordination. So in this process, TSOs must choose the best remedial actions on a European scale to implement in the network in order to ensure that it, it is secure. Of course, it's a large-scale problem, so we can hardly do it by hand. That's why we need an automatic uh, tool which is called DRAO or the Remedial Action Optimizer. The DRAO will have to choose the most optimal remedial actions in a given perimeter, and it also has to do so uh, by minimizing costs that are um, imposed by, uh, by cost remedial actions. So using an open source RAW has many benefits. First of all, transparency, because we are in a European uh, perimeter. So what better way to be transparent about what the RAW does and which cost remedial actions it selects than to put its code in open source, given, of course, that it's well documented. It also serves the purpose of coordination because this way when we put a tool in open source, different TSOs from different countries and different vendors from different countries can cooperate more easily. It also serves robustness, interoperability. It also ser serves reusability and time to market because when a, a tool is used in many uh, business contexts, it becomes more versatile, it becomes more robust, and it becomes quicker to deploy. At RTE, we have developed uh, an open source remedial action optimizer called the Possible Open RAO. So for, for those of you who maybe know it, it was called uh, Farao in the past. The journey started in 2019. But two weeks ago, we made the move to Possible Open RAO, and we did this because um, we wanted to join the Linux Foundation Energy Adventure because LFE provides a clear governan governance um, for which all contributors accept to abide, and it also provides a clear methodology to work uh, more efficiently and in better intelligence. OpenRAO is actually used internally at RTE, but also in many European processes. So I talked about Regional Operational Security Coordination, or ROSC. Um, OpenRAO is being implemented for the SWE region here, which covers France, Spain, and Portugal. It is already in operation for uh, another process, which is called capacity calculation, uh, on the Italy North region and on the core region, which is actually the largest region in Europe to conduct the coordinated uh, comp computations. It covers around uh, a dozen countries. few words about what our RAO can do. 
So it's an optimizer, so of course it has to have an objective function. It can either minimize the worst congestion or remove all congestions in the network. Uh, about congestions, we can model flow congestions and we can optimize flow congestions. So this is the example I talked about in the previous slides. We can also model voltage magnitude constraints and voltage angle constraints. But for now, the RAO cannot optimize them. It can only monitor them. For remedial actions, we can optimize phase shift transformers in a given range. So the RAO, if you give it a range of possible tap positions for the phase shift transformer, it will choose the most optimal one that reduces congestions over the whole network. We can optimize an HVDC set point, so it can change the set point of the HVDC to reduce constraints. It can also choose to activate or not activate some topological actions, for example, closing a switch or opening a switch. It can optimize a subset of redispatching remedial actions, so actually re uh, redispatching remedial actions are pretty complex, and actually in OpenRAW we just have a subset with strong limitations. Also, it can uh, optimize a subset of shunt compensator actions, and it can, for now, only model counter-trading remedial actions, uh, but we do not support optimizing them in the RAW. So, of course, like I said, OpenRAW is used in a multiplicity of uh, business contexts, so it is very versatile. It has a lot of uh, ways you can use it by changing the input data or by changing its parameters. So. If you need more information, you can look uh, on our website for, uh, for all the ways it can be used. Under the hood, the OpenRAW software is licensed under Mozilla uh, Public License 2.0. It's hosted, uh, hosted on GitHub, and the code is written in Java 17. So we use JUnit for, uh, for unit testing, of course. We use Maven for dependency management. We monitor the quality of the code on Sonar Cloud, and we're pretty, we're pretty happy <laughs> with our figures. We publish the code on uh, OSS Sonotype, and we rely closely on the possible library to be able to model the network and to simulate it, uh, in particular to use sensitivity computations and load flow computations. We also, this is specificity of the RAW, we also use Google OR tools. I don't know if you know it, but it's an open source modelization um, library for linear problems developed in open source by Google. And through it, we can support a multiplicity of linear solvers. For now, for example, we have Skip, which is an open source solver, also CBC, uh, but also we can support Express, Groby, Cplex, which are uh, commercial ones. As a side note, we tested that OpenRAW is compatible with Docker, Jenkins, Kubernetes, and Cucumber testing. So, in conclusion, we'd be more than happy for you to participate in our RAW adventure, either by using it and giving feedback or by uh, contributing uh, to the project. So the best way to join the adventure would be to join the possible uh, Slack team and then to join the RAW channel. And um, there is also a quick tutorial in Java if you want to play around with the RAO on our website. And if you want to know what the future of the RAO looks like, the roadmap is updated once per month, and it is discussed during the possible TSC, which you are free to join. Um, moving on to the next uh, subject, with, with it, which is uh, decomposition and cost sharing. So I'm going to set the scene with a small example here. Imagine that you have three zones. Let's say there they are three countries, A, B, and C. Imagine that you have big power production in the north of A and big power consumption in the south of A. Then naturally, you'd expect the power to flow from north to south, so from producer to consumer. But in reality, it's not so simple. Only part of this commercial exchange, the power that is sold to the consumer, only part of it will transit through the internal lines of zone A, and the other part will go through zone B, then to zone C, 
and, and then to zone A to the consumer. So of course the consumer got the power they needed but some of the power t went through zones B and C. We call these loop flows or polluting flows. So the commercial exchange is simply the sum of internal flows plus loop flows. And we say that they are polluting because they transit through zones in which they are not consumed. So as you can imagine, more loop flows in a, in a polluted zone means more loads on the zone's internal grid. It means eventually more remedial actions to, to implement, possibly costly, and this leads to more costs for redispatching and counter trading. So in the core region alone, we have up to 3.7 billion euros per year of redispatching and counter trading. And of course, loop flows are a reality. They're, they're a consequence of the topology of the network. We can do nothing about them. We, we cannot eliminate them. However, we can compute them and we can better share costs when we know where they come from. So the ACER, again, the, the, the European regulator, uh, defined a clear methodology of computing loop flows in the core region. And this methodology is followed by a methodology to better share costs between TSOs. Of course, using an open source tool has all, uh, all benefits here and most of all transparency because when you talk about sharing costs, we, we talk about TSOs having to share, share the bills and being transparent is very important. At RTE, we developed a tool which is called Possible Flow Decomposition. It follows the ACER methodology, so uh, you have the documentation for it here. Uh, and it, had, it has both a Java and a Python API. Under the hood, it's almost the same as the RAO, so MPL 2.0. It's developed in Java. Um, it uses Maven. It's hosted on GitHub. It uses a lot of um, computations thanks to Possible for load flow computations. And most importantly, it's already supported in our uh, Pi Possible API. That's it for me. Do you have any questions? So <clears throat> maybe I wasn't paying enough attention. When you so the purpose of your, of your system is to allow you, if something happens like whatever that thing on the Pyrenees was a couple of years ago, for the whole system to react appropriately. But you were showing that you were doing subsets of the computations. I didn't understand in an emergency, presumably everyone needs to do something right at the same time, the whole network, however far the effect propagates. So, so what was happening there? What happens in an emergency versus whatever you were showing on the screen with doing computations for various regions? Um, this is not really um, an engine that is supposed to help decision making in real time. It's supposed to be used as an optimizer for the grid. For example, in the um, Regional Operational Security Coordination, TSOs have like a photo of the grid in the day ahead, so 24 hours before real time. We merge the whole grid models of different TSOs, we conduct load flows, and then we see if there are any congestions. If there are any congestions, then we run a remedial action optimization. The opt optimizer will tell us, okay, I found these non-costly remedial actions and these costly remedial actions that will make the network secure. 24 hours ahead. 24 hours ahead or during the day, but it's not supposed to tell the operator which remedial action to choose. This is um, another, this is really apart from balancing, and if you, um, if we go back to the example where I showed balancing, something that resembles balancing, what we should do here is every time we change production somewhere, we have to, so if, if, we, if we decrease the production here, we have to increase the production here because the TSOs do, anyway, w when we, when we, um, when we handle congestions, we cannot change the balance of the network. So 
bal uh, the balance between uh, demand and uh, offer is, is handled in another process. Hello. Um, I have a question about how much resolution you need to see into each of the grids in order to actually make some of this. Could you talk a little bit about the visibility that's required at the TSO level and, or beneath it, for example? It depends on the process. So in the regional, uh, in the regional security coordination, we look at high level uh, voltage, so 200 kilovolts and 400 kilovolts. And basically, all big production uh, hubs are on this voltage level. But this is a really g generic uh, remedial action optimizer, so we can generalize it to whichever resolution we need. Some idea, uh, yeah. Is there some ideas to change uh, the software for real-time congestion management, like for DSOs or for other systems? Uh, yes, some experimentation is uh, being is under uh, uh, is underway uh, for balancing, um, in order to be able to find curative remedial actions in real time. So for for now, it's not an operation, but yeah, so it's being experimented. So, yeah, my question is about impact. Have you noticed that other TSOs, European TSOs, are using your software as well? Or is, is that the goal in the end, to share among different TSOs as the European scale? Uh, for now, we are the only TSO using the RAW internally. However, um, here it is Coriso, which is the, the ca computation coordinator that is using Open RAW for these three regions. And also the idea of joining the possible um, project is to be able to develop um, Python API pretty quickly and to be able to have more users in different TSOs. Uh, what kind of algorithm is used uh, in open uh, rail? We have an optimization algorithm, so a linear optimization algorithm. I have a few slides in the appendix for this. We can talk about it later if you want. But basically, it's a search tree um, in which we optimize the topological actions. And inside, after every topological optimization, we run a linear program to optimize linear remedial actions. These are remedial actions that have a linear effect on flows, for example, PSTs and HVDCs. Uh, how do you test it? How do you ensure that there isn't a bug that affects all open row instances running simultaneously? With this, <laughs> if it answers your question, so we have, yeah, so we have a, a lot of input files and expected output files, and with this stack, uh, with Docker, Jenkins, and uh, Cucumber, Cucumber is a framework for um, functional testing. So you write scenarios in a Gherkin uh, language. You say, for example, given this input file for the RAW, then I expect that there is no congestion at the end and that this remedial action is activated. You write it in a very natural language. And uh, of course, there is code to, do, uh, to, to run these things. And then we put that in a Docker and in Jenkins, and we run this every night upon like almost 500 scenarios. And every night, we are sure that our main branch on GitHub uh, is still solid. Congratulations for your time management and
Ça a mis un sujet extrêmement complexe. Super. Bravo, bravo, bravo. bravo.